back here at the Los Caballero Sports Village in Fountain Valley, California on ESPN3, the Watch ESPN app, which is highly active. Dave Fink and Dave Vincent, yours truly. Dave, I know you have the app on as well, and you're watching other sports as well as handball on Watch ESPN. Don't you love that thing? I mean, when you're on a plane flying or when you're at home, you can flip on your favorite sports, soccer, college football. Yesterday was just packed full of some great games. Utah losing yesterday to USC. Since we're kind of right dead in the middle of Pac-12 country here. I guess all they needed was to get rid of Sark. Too soon. <laughs> I mean, with all that distraction with that program, they come back and beat Utah, which was undefeated. Well, maybe they got rid of the distraction. That's true. Here, though, the only thing distracting us is the beautiful weather outside of the sports village. A lot of people say, where's Fountain ready? Valley, California? But if you think about John Wayne Airport or Santa Ana, Anaheim, Disneyland, we're just a, maybe five miles from Disneyland as the crow flies. And Dave, I know how you like to distance, use the distance measurements of how the crow flies when you <laughs> yeah, talk about. Yeah, I can't even imagine where this is going, but go ahead. Our, yeah. our little bungalow on the beach as the crow flies. Yeah. Seven miles away from here. Mm. But right, let's go. as the crow drives, yeah. about 37 <laughs> miles. <laughs> This is Nani Alvarado Jr. wearing the white shirt and his biggest foe as of late, Marco Chavez, and they have a little bit of tension. You would say that their relationship is very similar to Ashley Riley's and Katrina Casey's, mm. except for there's a little bit more flair involved between these two. Nani Alvarado tries to downplay the behavior of Marco Chavez, saying, you know, he's not one of my kids, kids I can't spank him. Yeah. But he can try to spank him on the handball court, I guess. And then Marco's is this a fun-loving guy who likes to get into the heads of the referees and the is players? Is he fun-loving, though? I think so. Yeah. Well, and at least Marcos admits to his role in this contentious relationship. Nadi just completely downplays it as though it's a one-sided. Yeah. You but, know. but it did obviously affect Ready? Nadi Alvarado You're about fair. this time You're last fair. year at the Tucson event in November when Marcos did that pre win fist pump that almost should running have been chainsaw running chainsaw <laughs> fist pump twice in a row he, it was it was called back because <laughs> it was a hinder which should have been an avoidable and maybe even a red final. card <laughs> and then he did it again to prove from that orange county california <laughs> that he Get won the match marcos chavez this is another final though 40 plus senior <laughs> professional senior handball tour from spring valley lake california get up for nadia alvarado Double handshake there from Nadia Alvarado. It's always a classy move. <laughs> zero, <laughs> sir, zero. <laughs> Dave, Marcos Look looked at that. just Point. terrible yesterday in that doubles match where he made eight straight airs, but it's One, a new sir, day zero. here. And Marcos gets an ace serve on an underhand flop in. Point. Here we go. I thought it would happen on the first point, but since the, point. the first point was an ace, not much he could say, but it Two did start right there. Funny how Mar Marcos did it again. I think it's going to be overturned here. I don't People think so. People disagree. Mm. Ace. Ace. And he gets yeah. a third point. Told right. you it was going to be overturned. No, I, I thought the ref called it good. That's two aces on that underhand flop in. I mean. You're already seeing a completely different intensity from Nadia Alvaro than we saw last night. Uh oh. Terrible shot from Nadia. Cut out. Marcos has only defeated Nadia twice in 20 years of pro play. One of those was last year, like you mentioned earlier, in Tucson, where. They played a one-game final to 25. Nadi led 14 to Zero 10. Three. to go into halftime with a pretty substantial lead and ends up losing 25-16. Short. Second serve. Love hearing that constant beeping from the massage table. 
over the live broadcast on ESPN. Just well, Dave, you're not the only person that's Hold working it. out here. You know, it's hard to believe. Other people also Zero, earning a three. living. Well, I'm just saying I love hearing it. I'm hmm. not saying I don't love hearing it, which is how Nord. you reacted. I did react that way. You know how I am about beeping noises and Second clocks, serve. time. Right. This is helping Bing. the inter internal clock stay on focus. And what else? <laughs> Staying out, going outside. Entering a club. Talking to people. Hmm. That's the worst. Out. <laughs> Three third zero. According, Dave, to John Bike, who's our head referee here and Point. handball historian, this is the lar largest single prize payout for a Masters Division match since the 1931 showdown Four between Al Ben Wet and Murderball. Wow, and what was that? That was for 5000 which today would have been well over $90,000. Okay. Yeah. It was Al Ben Wet. Yeah. And Mad Ball? What, what Murder Ball. Murder Ball, okay. And it, was this Zero played in four. a prison somewhere? No, this was, that was Murder Ball's nickname. And that was a senior match, like an over 40 well, match. Well, Al was 40 at the time, Murder Ball 47. Wow. Point. So technically it was a Masters match. We've never seen two gentlemen more than 40 years old competing for this One, much three, money since 1931. In doubles, Toddy Severa and Naughty were both over 40 when they won, but not. And that was a $10,000. But not competing against opponents. Well, in they their ran 40s. into each other a couple times trying to <laughs> hit that one ball, and they weren't 40 at the time either. <laughs> Point. And a good start from Marcos is now being negated by a couple of errors. Three thirds, four. But nothing. Like Short. we saw yesterday from Marco Chavez. Mm -hmm. Well, not yet. There's two Second in a row serve. on the <laughs> scoreboard, though, of missed balls, balls that did not make the front wall. I wonder if Al Banuet did that. Hold it. You like that call there, Dave? Yeah, I mean, if Naughty would have got out of the way instantly, I think it's all right. But when you clear late, that's when it becomes avoidable and, and Three, or four. screen territory. I think if the referee very early on says avoidable, he sends the message. There's a big setup here for Marco Chavez. Takes the left down low, gets the kill Cut shot. Out. Dave, there's so much physics involved. You see when a player comes to the back wall, it's going to be a setup, but the ball pops up a little higher than they expected. Four, three. They're able to switch their shoulder, let the ball Four, drop yes. below a certain angle, and they take a little off, go over the top, and they're still able to hit, hit a kill shot from strange angles. Five, thirds, three. Four aces for Marcos on this serve? Yeah, it's unbelievable. I love Four. that call from our referee. I like the fist pump from Marco Chavez. Yeah, well, he was fist pumping, I think, the referee who gave him a chance to end the rally while standing on top of Nadi. So as much as we question the referee, we have to take one of those questions off the table. I don't question this referee. He was my number one selection going into this tournament and still is. Oh, he was my 20th selection mm. and still is. <laughs> but now he's 18. Oh. Because of that Six serves three. Six serves three here. Best two out of three to 21 tiebreaker to 11. Shut out. This referee last night told a person that was walking by that they were racist because that person three wouldn't talk six. to them. 
during the event. Well, it's plausible. And that person turned around and said, I'm working. <laughs> and that doesn't make me a racist because I have work to do. But was he, though? Take I, away I don't know. Word, I'm not here to oh, judge yeah. whether the person was working or not or a racist, but yeah. I felt that was pretty funny. Four serve six. <laughs> nice that form there from Naughty. And talking to John Bike, who is Naughty's brother-in-law and sparring partner, said that Naughty wanted to add that shoulder-high kill to his repertoire. He said he needed to... Point to end rallies from a little bit higher up because players are defending his serve better than he was used to. And he's added that. You saw it in New York when he defeated the race for eight, number three, Evan Pichot. Five, serve six. Well, that was what I was talking Short. about earlier, how a player can learn to kind of lift their shoulder in the air and go over the top of that ball when it is Second hit serve. higher and still be very effective by going over the top. Naughty does that about as good as anybody. Sean Linney's made a career off of it. Wow, that's beautiful. Nadia Alvarado and Marco Chavez both ranked in the top 15 on the Race for a Tour. Now, the rankings will debut next week, Dave, and there's a new ranking system. Six or six. You see that great shot. And it's hard to say where the names are going to fall now. We're only counting five of the last. Five of the best seven. Nadia Alvarado losing a semifinals appearance here last year with only two other tournaments on his resume and didn't earn any points here. And it was show, six I think six. will be dropping Dave below Sean Lenning. Sean Lenning perhaps going ahead of Luis Moreno oh. because Sean lost here in the first round last year, made it to the semifinals this year. And it six. Finishing about the same this year as he did last year, so you're gonna see a, a shakeup, Dave. Hold it. Oh, I don't think so. That's the one play that we see a lot being replayed by yeah. referees. When Seven, so. six. As a player, though, you know you just made the best shot you possibly yeah. could have made. Even right if out. they're able to get over there, you know that nothing could be made of it. But there's no guarantee. And you have to call it over as a referee, but as a player on the court, you know for a fact Six they're not getting seven. it back. And it's very conflictive. See, here it is again. Will the ref call it point. this time? And it's called a point this time. You see, it's the same play. Well, a little bit different. This ball slid the wall, and Marcos seven, was a little bit farther seven. up in the court. I agree with the call there. Well, he's your number one. You have to. That's a broken ball, finally. What What did you say about that in the women's game last night? We had three broken balls mm -hmm. in the first ten points. Yeah. I, I haven't even seen that ball break. The 21 ball is not a ball that breaks very often, and it was in a women's match, and I thought that was kind of interesting that we saw three so quickly. Here we saw three in, in, in matches early with the race for eight ball. And now our first seven, breakage sir, seven. here in the show court today, and that was after the two hardest hitters of the game Short. played their match. Paul Brady defeating Luis Moreno earlier today in two. Second serve. Nice serve there from Nadia Alvarado goes to that left corner and Marcos point. can't get it back and there's a point. Dave Marcos has a bad back like like I believe you do, but is it similar? Have you talked no. to him about it? His is eight or seven has some pain that goes down his leg, more of a sciatica type of thing, but Short. I don't believe it really locks up to the point where he can't play. Mine actually instantly goes Second to a serve. place where I can't even get my shoes off. So it completely inhibits my ability to play. I think he's able to to play through some soreness and uncomfortable. Hold it, pain. hold it. But certainly it limits him. And I think, Dave, his sciatic is the type of thing that can just act up Eight, when seven. you least expect it. Uh, 
as backs tend to do. Point. Marcos jumps in and grabs this ball because his ball hit the front wall after the ground, right? There's the ground first. So Strange Nani, to see that. Yeah, it was it was instantly it left his hand and went right down to yeah. the ground. But Nani didn't see that part, so he just saw the ball hit the front wall and said, "Oh, it made it." Yeah. Kind of screened. Nine to Nine seven. seven. Alvarado has the lead after Marcos jumped out to a three four point lead. Point. I hate to miss that shot. Marco Chavez only really needing to hit the front wall six inches high and hits it in the ground. You know, I think Marcos holds the record for being in the finals of the most simple green U.S. Open of handball pro divisions. Right. Whether win or lose, I think he holds that record, and I would say every year he's in something the on six, average. Six doubles Ten championships here. And then he was in the finals of the outdoor three wall doubles one year. Now in the finals here of this. Point. 40, that's at least eight times out of nine years that I know of. And it could be nine out of nine. 11 serve seven. That was an amazing serve from Nadi, who's still, Dave, in his early 40s, one of the best servers in the sport. Point. Nadi looks good right now. Very humble this morning on the live interview that we had with Nadi Alvarado when we talked about playing Dermot Nash a few days ago in the pro division. 12 serve seven. Where he lost 21 to 20. And he said, you know, it was going to happen either way. I mean, even if I would have won that first game, I would have lost after that. Because the kid's just better than I am. Point. But Naughty looks really good. But then again, Marcos has given him that opportunity. You're not seeing a lot of really extended rallies. You play Dermot Nash, and you're having to hit. And Marcos is very close there. But you're having to hit five or six straight shots to win a rally. Most of the rallies are 10 or more shots. Here we're seeing shorter rallies and not as much running. Point. Nani Alvarado looks great right now. Just the way he's setting up and hitting the ball. 14 serve seven. Game number one, best two out of three to 21. Cut out. Not a great looking swing, but <laughs> no. got the job done. Marcos went over the top in that seven flub serve 14. that got the side out. Point. Marco shows you that he's got a lot of pop when he needs it. He's almost uses that big ball swing where he throws his whole body into the serve. Eight serves 14. Very different than Nadi, who seems to just have that easy flick of the wrist. Over. Dave, as a player on this court, a lot of the top pros and, and certainly last night in the women's we saw it too. We we're talking about how dark it is off the back wall. Some players don't have a Eight problem with that. But what are your struggles off the back wall here? Do you ever lose it or ever get that feeling that you can't set up correctly? I seem to see the ball fine here but for some reason the ball doesn't pop off the back wall the way I'm expecting it and I'm never able to make the adjustment. It seems to kind of pop up and the back wall seems almost like it's angled towards the bleachers slightly. And maybe that's just my perception, but it just doesn't come off the back wall, and the ball's not where I expect it to be when I'm hitting the shot. Point. You feel the ball's targeting down quicker? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So my s contact point is slightly eight. behind where I'd like it to be, and then I'm just not comfortable. You see guys like Naughty never seem to have problems Point. at this right. club. And I know that he's played here a lot and practiced a lot, but he just seems so fluent off the back wall. Never getting fooled. 16 serves eight. He's had some great matches on this court. 
That was a close up shot. Point. No timeout called for Marcos yet. Timeout. And there it Score is. Score 17 serves eight. Marcos with a really nice start here to this match. He was just kind of cruising. Serve four aces in his first five serves, all underhand mobs. And Nadi just seemed a little bit out of sorts, but since then, Nadi Alvarado really taking over and looking like an elite superstar. Let's go to Nadi Alvarado Sr. I believe is courtside, and Kara Mack is going to capture it. Kara, what's going on? I do have him courtside with me. What does this mean to you to have him out here, have your son out here for the championship in this tournament actually honoring you? Well, it means a great deal. You know, Nadi, uh, obviously, he got in the, in the open division. He played in the, uh, in the quarterfinals. He came real close to uh, Nash in the, uh, in the first game. Then uh, second game, it was a little bit harder for him. So I think that the decision to concentrate on the Masters, which is the 40 plus, was a good one. Since we are starting the, with the WPH, giving the price money for them. And I think that uh, is well earned. And uh, being that in such a in great shape, uh, he can play both divisions. And he's just an amazing person, an amazing player. And uh, he's. Right now, he's more in his environment where he can play somebody that is four years older. And you can see the difference on, in his legs. Coming here, you kind of get to experience the Alvarado family experience because there's the three generations. You guys are doing everything here. I've barely been able to see you sit and watch a match. I'm glad I was able to catch you now watching your son. But you've, it's honoring you, but you seem very busy and very excited about this whole weekend. Well, it, it's, it's an, a great event. We have Mr. Fabricio eight. here that gives us a lot of money. And we want the tournament to run well, you know, to be properly uh, executed. So this morning, yes, I was blowing the, the one wheel course over there and then come over here to do it. But uh, we had such an amazing eight. response from all the participants and the people that come over and watch that my grandchildren are involved now. They're, they're just helping, Boy. they come over. We have meetings at the house. So uh, we have an excuse to get together and that was one. You know, have a meeting uh, for uh, getting ready for the for the simple green pro stop. Your grandkids now part of it all. Are any of them handball players? They what? Any of your grandkids handball players? Uh, oh, no, it. not yet. Uh, <laughs> although uh, the little uh, uh, John, uh, John San and Lupita San, is playing uh, baseball, and they're all in other sports right now, which is great. Uh, little Adriana's. Son, he gets in the in our court. He starts to play a little bit of three wall or one wall. He takes grandma over there and he says, like, "Come on, grandma, let's go play." And there she goes. So it's a lot of it's a lot of fun. And it's it's so good to see him play out there too, because uh, later on he might end up playing mm -hmm. handball. He's got a very natural uh, ability to watch the ball and follow it. So he might be good later on. Must be neat for you. And I know coming into this, it had to be a ton of work. Well, but what were you feeling as far as just the days coming into it? Anxiety, excitement? It's all of the above. It's just, it starts uh, building the outdoor courts. Uh, we have a crew of about six or seven people working it. We go four days. And then they come back tomorrow. They turn it down in one day. And it's part of the, you know, it's growing and look at how it's going from the bottom up. It's, just, it's a great feeling, you know, what I get from that. And uh, although uh, it's just a one wall, three wall, it's like in here, they have great athletes. Yesterday and today, they have the best players in one Second wall, three wall, and four wall. And there's uh, a lot of tiebreakers. There's a lot of great play. So it's so awesome to see three sports in one venue. It's just awesome. To have it all come to an end tonight, what do you think you're going to go home and dream about? <laughs> well, I think I'm going to be able to sleep. You know, I haven't done that in about a month or so. But uh, the satisfaction of running a big event uh, is, is immense. It's just great. You're not going to reveal what you're going to dream about. It's going to be such <laughs> no. a deep sleep you will not remember. Right, I'm I hope sure. not, yes. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you, Kara. Marcos Eight, finally able to win a rally with a behind Bad between the legs. Back wall kill. Nadia Alvarado. Scoring eight straight points. And eight serves 20. And 15 Point. of 18. Yeah. Make that 
15 and 19 points. Nine serves 20. Point. Now Marco's scoring at will. 10 serves 20. Short. Second serve. You know, Nadi Sr. was kind of downplaying how good Jab was. John Alvarado bike at handball. He's won national championships, world championships as well. And there's no doubt in my mind that his grandson would be a professional handball player if he decided to. Hold it. In fact, Gabriella, his sister, also won a world title. Ten serves twenty. Point. It feels a serve. Eye side good. One, one agrees, one disagrees. We've seen Nadi have Point. a lot of problems closing out games. He referenced the 20 to 16 lead that he wasn't able to. 11 serves 20. Capitalize on against Thurman Nash. He also led Chris Watkins 20 to 12 last night. Point. Needed 16 Timeout. minutes. Force 12 serves From the 20. time he reached 20 to win that first game and six serves. Now <laughs> at one point led 20 to eight. Now it's 20 to 12. And you see this, David. I'm sure you've experienced this yourself. You get to 20 with not not that much difficulty, and then all of a sudden you just get stuck. Yeah, I don't understand the mental aspect of the game when it comes to that, but it's just hard to close out sometimes. You climb the mountain, you're right there, and then all of a sudden things change. And I think it's a combination of yourself, but also your opponent now feels so much more relaxed because they know the game's over that your opponent just says, well, I'm just going to relax here and take a little bit off the ball, and now they're hitting their shots. And it's, it's kind of a strange thing that happens to a lot of folks. Dave, you've been a perpetual closing failure mm -hmm. over your career, and I'm yeah. trying to say that lightly. Yeah. What goes to your head? Well, I just know that I'm not going to score that final point <laughs> unless my opponent swings and misses. So. And sometimes they do. Not really, as you see by my results. I'm the same way. I, I just always struggled with being able to get the last few points. My struggles are that I don't feel like I deserve to win. And I don't, almost don't want to. If I was playing Nadi Alvarado and I was up 18 to 13, I would say to myself, he's too, I shouldn't be beating him, and I would downplay hey, who I well was. Well, serves 20. That's where we get a hold of the sports psychologist. Short. Second serve. Second serve here, though. Nice get from Alvarado. Point. Hard to believe, Dave, that now Marcos is actually in this game. I mean, he's a long shot, but at 20 to 8, looked like we were just playing out the string. Now five straight points. And with each point Marcos scores, Nadi becomes a little bit more uncomfortable, which increases Marcos' chances even more. Right now, Dave, by our odds, Marcos is still a 22 to 1 shot to win this 13 game. 13 serves 20. But he was a 50 to 1 shot at 20 to 8. Point. Make that 18 to 1 as our formula, Dave, computes everything within seconds. 14 serves 20. Dave, what is it about when you can't get that last point? Now all of a sudden your opponent. When your opponent. Your opponent starts to play a lot better. It seems like he can't miss. Yeah. And you can't do anything. Yeah, but I've also seen it where the opponent comes back and ties the score, and then they can't 15 score. 15 serves 20. Point. 
Look at that. Point. Now another point for Marco Chavez. He was down 20 to 8. 7 to 1 now, Dave, from 50 to 1 at 20 to 8. Our 16, so algorithm 20. now says 7 to 1. And Dave, if you factor in momentum, you'd have to say it's more like 4 to 1. Oh, could end right. right here, though. Now Nadi's going to feel more of a sense of urgency, and he might play a little harder here and break that, that monkey. Marco Chavez scoring eight straight points. 20 serves 16. Down eight to 20, and then just within what, Dave? Two and a half minutes, three minutes? Yeah. Take out the towel timeout. Short. Nadi just about ended it right there. But Dave, I've seen players come back from deficits like that, and yeah. then they couldn't get over the mountain. Second yeah. serve. We've and seen this before. Charlie Shanks losing huge leads to Martin Malkerns at the Nationals about Worlds. three years ago. Against Paul Brady. That was 19 to 15. And Nadi game. does close it out. 21-16. Strange game. Nadi Alvarado takes down Marco Chavez. We're going to take a break here. And uh, we'll be back in just a few minutes on ESPN3 and the Watch ESPN app. Marco Chavez losing to Nadi Alvarado. Game two coming up right around the corner. College is hard, down, those books are heavy. My sport is football, but my passion is education. Right up so every year I take promising high schoolers on a college tour there, to show them that higher education means a brighter future. <laughs> my name is Namdi Asamoa. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. You can be a reader, tutor, or mentor too. Take the pledge at liveunited.org slash volunteer. Do you wear this? Now, when you take the ultimate leap of faith from the top of the stratosphere, you could be our 200,000th sky jumper. An extreme adrenaline rush is just the beginning. You could win a seven day Mexican cruise, a three night stay at Stratosphere, and a Take Vegas Back party package. Put Sky Jump at the top of your bucket list. Book your jump now at the Stratosphere. Visit stratosphereHotel.com for details. Every day, kids witness bullying. Oh, look! Your crush is looking at you. <laughs> Poor you. They want to help, but don't know how. See, no one here is going to help you. because no one. Teach your you. kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. Here we go. We're gonna we're gonna make some juice. It's gonna be good. She's excited. A little bit of kale. Please don't put this on. Line. I'm putting it all over the line. It's wet. It needs something. No, it'll go. Don't break my juicer. Looks good. You ready to try it? Come on, baby. Challenge your kids to be active and eat healthy. It's okay. Okay. Like it. All right. They might surprise you. And she took another sip. You saw it. Search we can for more ideas on how you and your kids can get healthy together. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Play your part in the circle of life. Take time to be a dad today. Visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. 
happen to Vegas? When did it become such a never-ending spray tan foo-foo poser parade filled with socialites, celebutants, and VIP wannabes? What about the average Joes? The girls next door, you and me. It's about time the real people take a stand and take Vegas back. Right here, right now. You with me? Sign the Every Manifesto Pledge at TakeVegasBack.com. The Tucson Racquet Club is your home away from home. Join us for world-class tennis, handball, racquetball, and the new rage, pickleball. Or try one of our 160 weekly group exercise classes. Want to swim laps or play with your family in the pool? Enjoy our two junior Olympic-sized pools and wading pool that are open year-round. Then round out the perfect day with a delicious meal at our restaurant or sports bar. All at the Tucson Racquet and Fitness Club, where Country Club Road ends and fitness begins. All right, time in. Set ready? Zero, set zero. And we are back here for game number two at zero to zero. Nadia Alvarado wins game number one. 21 to 16. It was Marco Chavez trailing 21, 20 to 8, and he scored eight straight points to draw Point. it fairly close, but he couldn't get over the mountain, and Nani scores the first point. It's the 40 plus senior race for eight, stop number one finals here at the Simple Green U.S. Open. Game number two, Dave Vincent alongside Dave Pink. First game, not nearly as close as the score would indicate, Dave. 21-16, but remember, Nani led 20-8. to eight One third zero. After scoring 17 of 21 points. Marcos then scoring eight Point. in a row. Two third zero. And Dave, it's Point. been a long streak of dominance for Nadia Alvarado against his Southern California foes. Mondo Ortiz Three, sir, zero. has had a lot of difficulty defeating Nadia Alvarado, as has Marco Chavez, Vic Perez. You have to go back to the, the years of Tati Silvera and, and Vince Munoz to find guys that could really match Nadia locally right. here. And when I say locally, I mean these are some of the best players in the Four, world sir, breaking zero. this the Southern California area. In fact, I don't know that Mondo Ortiz has ever beat Nadia Alvarado. If he has, it's been just once. Up against a lot of losses. I thought Mondo Five, defeated zero. Nadi at that plumber bash a couple years back when Mondo made it to the finals. And maybe no, that's, did. yeah, did. right? Yeah. The spring classic, did right. Nadi get beat by Mondo at the LAAC? No. But he did zero, third, beat Nadi at the plumber. I think at that time Mondo said that's the first time I've ever done that. Yeah. And Nadi's that was that surprised me point. because Mondo Nadi's sick with the flu that week. One third five. Point. Dave, would you say Nani looks even fitter now than you've ever seen him? I mean, just standing next to him here in the booth, he's kind of chiseled out of stone. Two thirds five. Short. I mean, Dave, it looks like he does curls and... Second serve. Tricep lifts all day. Point. Nadi said his legs were just were not Three, third, five. the best that they've ever been leading into this tournament, but he, physically he looks great. Cut out. Oh. 
Marcos Chavez scoring some points here. Five thirds three. Not a good serve One. there from Nadi. Really the worst return you can hit if you're Marcos. You go for the kill, but you leave it up. Now you're pinned behind Nadi with the ball right on his right hand, and from there it's pretty Six much automatic. Three. Doubles coming up right around the corner yeah, after this end. Be a part of that. Three serve six. Huge junior clinic here this morning, Dave. At the same time as that pro doubles. Point. Four serve six. Short. Second serve. Appeal. The appeal to short. One disagrees, one agrees. So second serve. What a shot there from Naughty, Dave. Can you even teach a shot like that? No. Six, there's four. That's but really a Paul Brady esque shot. And I think Paul Brady probably learned that kind of shot from watching Naughty Alvarado Jr. And I think Naughty Jr. got that from his dad. Almost some contact there between the two. Wow, how does Marcos get that? Great anticipation. Point. Now he's just really dictating most of these rallies. Marcos is trying to change the pace, but it's not really affecting Nadi. Seven, search four. See Marcos here trying to just feather the ball down the wall, but it clips the side wall. A huge setup. Point. Check the ball. This is the first men's pro 40 plus singles final at the Simple Green U.S. Open. Always seem to be adding new and exciting events here, Dave, at the Festival of Handball. That's what innovative people do. They just yeah. they don't stop at one innovation. Mm -hmm. They just keep pushing it forward and forward. Eight and every year, four. something a little bit better, more improved. In fact, I don't know of any innovative person that, that have ever done that. You know, that just they don't stop at one innovation. They just keep pushing it. Now he's hustling to get back into this rally. Point. Marcos had a bevy of shots he could have hit to end the rally, but he doesn't take advantage of it and ends up giving Nadi this big setup here. And that's right in Nadi's wheelhouse. If you're a handball player of any level, that's really the shot that you want. Right hand set up at the short line. And from there, you just tee off. They call that a green light special on tour. <laughs> Nadi's sporting some K tape on his Nine, hamstring. Four. Didn't list that on the injury report, Dave, that all players are required to submit to the broadcast booth before every match, and that's a fine, of course. Side out. Side out. Nadi doesn't hear that well, Dave, when the call doesn't go his way. <laughs> four, nine. <laughs> Notice that. Nani thought Short. he could get over to that. Heels, I call it short. They both agree. Second serve. Marco's not too far away here at four to nine. Heels. Make that five to Point. nine. Kind of a loss of focus there from Alvarado.
Five. Amazing Point. serve from Naughty. Marcos read that day, but it just straightens out and really just about impossible to return. And for some reason, Dave, Marcos has really struggled in that back right corner. That's where his yip started yesterday in the doubles. And we've seen him struggle in that same spot today. Wonder why that is. Do you think it's darker back there, or that might hurt his back more from that angle? Uh, it's hard to say, but the majority of his Ten, third, five. hand airs have come in that back right corner. Let out. Five, third, ten. Dave, yesterday we saw some of the most exciting matches in possibly the history of this event. Every match going to a tiebreaker. Thus far today, the match is not as close. Paul Brady coming back from a first Five game deficit ten. where he looked like he could be on the brink of going down a game, but he comes back and wins that and dominates in game number two. Here it's Marco Chavez who was down 20 to 8 in the first game before rallying and losing 21 16. Wow. Now he pulls up there after that rally, he seemed to be favoring his upper leg, perhaps where he has that. K tape. Won't hear Nani talk about his injuries very much, but you have to think that if he's taped up, that there has to be some sort of discomfort. Let's see if we can detect anything here in these next couple of rallies. And you see Nani not pushing to pick up that Marco Chavez cross court punch. Timeout, of course, five serves ten. Hard to speculate, but maybe a strained groin or some tight hamstrings. Maybe an adductor problem. It's Marco Chavez calling the timeout here as you see the Simple Green crew coming into the court to. Make sure that it's dry for these great players. Former world junior big ball champion, Jab Bike, working on the left side wall. Marco Chavez will realize that Nadi is perhaps a little bit injured here. Probably try and use that to his advantage. A 60 second timeout here. Marco Chavez Four, five, serves ten. trying to get himself back into this match. And you see Nadi really struggling right now. I'm not Point. sure he'll be able to continue here. Injury timeout. And now Nadi will take minutes. the injury timeout. It happened right around 
eight to five or nine to five where we saw Nadi pull up with that upper leg injury. By what I can tell, this looks like probably a groin problem that's going around into the hamstrings. Not really sure what this injury timeout could do for an injury like this, but he's gonna try and take a couple of minutes here. We're gonna go to Kara Mack, who's in the crowd here. Kara. Karen, just a second. Nadi Alvarado Jr. has come outside to the trainer's table here, right next to the broadcast booth. It's getting worked on here by the head trainer. And Karen, we're going to go to you courtside. Or maybe not. Hey, guys. Kara. Can you hear me there? Yeah. What's going on? Yep. Yeah. Yep, we can hear you. Okay, hey, sorry, you're cutting out on me, so I wasn't sure if you came up to us or not. I'm with Luis Cordova up here, who's refereeing this match. What are you seeing going on with Nadi to take this break? Well, he's shooting the ball, he's playing well. Um, I don't know, he's, he seems like he's running with it. So as, as far as the injury goes, are you noticing a big misstep as to how he's playing? Uh, I noticed that he injured himself when he jumped on the wall. And uh, I mean, it's only been a couple of points, so not, I haven't really noticed much, but I, I did see him kind of grabbing his leg, so. Can you talk about this rivalry a little bit? You know both these guys pretty well. What have you seen gone in, on in the past? What have you seen going on now? Well, I know that Marcos had never beat uh, Nadi uh, when they were younger. And then uh, lately he's beat him, I think, a couple of times. So, and they're always close games, so they have a real good rivalry. Talk a little bit about this tournament. You've been up here in the referee stand quite a bit, calling these matches. Which ones have stuck out to you? What are you really concentrating on with certain ones? Um, I try to concentrate, I don't know, just everything. Um, the serves on some of these are pretty tough, like when Brady's playing, when Naughty's playing. Um, it's pretty hard to see him sometimes, but you just gotta go with what I see. There's certain rule of thumbs that you see yourself sticking to that sometimes other referees don't. Do you trust in the players or anything like that more? Mm, I don't know. Nothing that sticks out right now. I'm not really sure. How do you see this one finishing up with an injury like this? I don't know. I think probably Nadi's going to take it if, if it's not that bad of an injury. That's what it's looking like so far. Talk about your experience here at the Open. You played with your brother in doubles. Is it nice to kind of have still have that, have your brother with you playing, doing that whole doubles camaraderie? Yeah, it's definitely fun. Um, we haven't played in a while, and uh, he's getting better, so it's pretty fun to be able to rely on him now. You've been up here for a lot of it, but what has the whole scene been like at this tournament, being the first one for four wall? It's been a... Uh, Pretty cool. I think everybody was pretty excited about it. Everybody is always excited about the money. Everybody loves this tournament. LA, pretty nice. What do you think we can see out of you for the rest of the remaining season? Um, I don't know. Hopefully, I can play decent and start a maybe make a few quarter final rounds. We'll see. All right. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thanks, Kara. And Dave just got word from the injury table. Nadi Jr. suffering with a groin either a strain or a pull. Dave, I don't think he's going to be able to continue based on what I saw in the last two points and how he's walking around right now. And Dave, I know you've had some lower body injuries. So have I. When that groin flares up, you can't play. It's nope. not a matter of, of playing through it. You literally can't play. Yeah, there's nothing your body will allow you to do. One step and you're done. Mm -hmm. And you just, you know, in doubles, there's a possibility you can stand there and just hope that there's some kind of strange miracle. But yeah. In singles, it's only going to take a couple serves, and Nani's going to realize that he can't do it. But, you know, he's going to probably fight it out because there's a $4,000 check here at the end of this. I, I believe he will go in and play. I don't, I don't think he'll continue. I don't think he'll finish this match. Well, let's just see. We're, the, once again, the score here. 10-5. to five, Yeah, that's tough. Nani Alvarado winning. If, if he does try to do it, and as Nani Andr Alvarado just got injured here, if he does try to continue... He has to win this game because he won't even come out for the second 
he wouldn't even come out for the third game. Well, I, I just don't know how he's going to be able to score 11 points without being able to move. Now, walking, he seems to be completely fine, and now well, he's looking for some of his gear. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I, hard to speculate, but having experienced an injury that I think is similar to this, you know, you just really can't can't do anything. Well, he's, gonna, he's trying all of the stuff that he can possibly do, and that is just tape it up as much as possible, and now he's going to put even more tape on. Yeah. The tape that he received at the med table, he's going to even tape it up more. You know, Dave, this is the kind of thing you can kind of get it warmed up and you feel pretty good, and then it's just a, a nothing move, and you flared it up, and now you're out for four to six weeks. And if, you know, you play through something like this, Dave, and you fully tear it, now you're out for months. And, you know, sometimes you just have to be smart about it. And now Lupita Alvarado is pulling an Aoife McCarthy here. And helping out Nadia Alvarado with his bandages and laundry and all that other stuff. And his sister knows best. Well, she is the original big sis who takes care of her younger brother. She's been, you know, Dave, I'd say the greatest handball fan that's ever lived. Just one tick ahead of Jimmy London in that long list of handball fans. Well, Jimmy's more of a handball heckler. A fanatic. A fanatic heckler. Well, that's what fan stands for. Oh, okay. But sometimes fan stands for supporter. Okay. That's how it's sometimes interpreted. I know I you've didn't never take supported. It that way. I know you've never supported a person or a team of any kind, but neither have I. I support the person or team that's winning. <laughs> Never been wrong in my predictions. Hmm. Well, Nadi is going to get back into the court, Dave. I'm like what you suggested. I don't think it's going to last long if it's as bad as I think it is. And that's the, that's the one injury where I just don't think anybody can do anything. You need your legs to, to leave the gate. And you can't fake it with one leg. You can fake it with one arm, but you can't fake right. it with one leg. Yeah. And Dave, even the serve is excruciatingly painful when you have this groin injury let alone having to move and plant and stretch. But let's see if Nadi Alvarado, who is the original shot maker left out, of this group out, of, out of this group of top handball players that still play on the Pro Tour. Okay, you have seven minutes and 30 seconds left. Nadi is the one remaining from the old school days that is a shot maker. Can he go shot maker right here on this serve right. and just go for the bottom board? Score is six, Dave? serves 10. No. Let's see if he does Short. That's so hard to get out of the gate over there. Six to ten is a score. Game number two, Marco Chavez. Second serve. He's now playing an injured Nadi Alvarado here. And Nadi is in a lot of pain. I could see it just in that swing, Dave. I don't see Nadi finishing this match. Point. I don't really see the point of it. I he's see him not finishing good. the game, but I don't know if he's going to finish the match. Hmm. Seven serves ten. I think Marco is actually trying to be nice there, and it wasn't taken that way from Nadi Alvarado. Yeah, Marco saying, "Hey, I'm telling you, I, Not out. I feel for you, or whatever the, the statement was." And Marco and Nadi's little yeah. took it as if, <laughs> like everybody seven. else would, probably in the situation. It's like, "What are you talking to me for?" Yeah. That bounce. What was that point there from Naughty? That was a, a bad bounce off. I know, the but Naughty pointed the one finger up. What did that stand Ten for? Serve seven. First serve. See how Naughty drifts there. Flips the ball back to the front wall, gets it. Marcos is going to pin him on the left wall, goes down the right, doesn't do it right. And Nadi had an opportunity to score a point. Slowly walks to the backcourt here. Marcos Seven, has learned not ten. that he can't talk to Nadi. Well, he can if he wants to get under his skin. And Dave, I remember you 
injuring your calf, I believe, in a doubles tournament that you and I played together. And you really couldn't even walk. It's hard for you just to get out of the way. And you were out for a couple of months after that. Oh my goodness. Out. <laughs> yep. I do remember that. But I also seven. felt that we can still compete in that <laughs> level because I wasn't doing anything anyway in the court and you were doing all the work. So I felt like if I just stood here, we could win. And guess what happened? Well, we like won. you said, though, it was we doubles won. where you didn't have to do anything but stand there. Nadia has to do a lot more than that. But he just scored a point here. Well, He just needs 10 more of these and he wins $4,000. Hmm. Minimum. 11 serve 7. Now we're not talking about sponsors and oh, we're not incentives and all that other stuff. Now he's just nine points away, and this is the reason why Naughty would play this because we saw Na Marcos yesterday miss eight straight balls, seven straight balls. Twelve serve seven breaks an all-time broadcast record. Yeah, of unreturned balls that were hit to him. About. And Nani should have 14 on the scoreboard here. That's the second one of those that he missed. And it's really hard to guide the ball in yeah. when you don't have any, any base. Point. Now you hear the crowd getting vocal. And Dave, we're seeing this now. It Eight seems like the 12. guys who are the most fit in handball are the ones that are the most injured. Good shot from Marcos. There's something to be being bound up by all that muscle and training. Whereas guys that are more rubbery Nine seem a lot 12. less inclined to be injured. Over. I know you have thoughts about that and everything else. Well, I was told once to disagree with everything you have to say, mm. but I'm not going to this time. I think, mm. you know, when you've got You've got more muscle involved. Nice You've got goal. more possibility of pulling one of those muscles, but I don't think that's the answer. Oh. Second serve. Everybody gets injured. This is a very rugged sport. Even the Ironman Dave, Dan Armijo, Over. injuring himself at this event. I'm not sure he's ever been injured, but had to pull out of, of this tournament. They have another packed house here. This is the yeah. biggest crowds I've seen at the Simple Green US Open, not just indoors, but outdoors too, just remarkable. If you saw the crowd from Nine yesterday, you would just shake your head. It was it looked like thousands of people watching the outdoor courts. Ten serves twelve. Marco should tee Point. off and does now 11 to 12. As a friend of Naughty Dave, I just don't like to see him putting himself through this. Short. It's just not necessary. For Second the record, ball. that's a one-way friendship, but I, yeah. you know, I agree with you on that. But. Second serve. But equally. Nine points away from winning. That might as well be nine miles when you can't even run. And you see Nadi doesn't even go for that. Point. And now we're all together at 12 here. Well, Dave, I don't see Nadi training for anything in the future here. He's not trying to become, 12, 13, 12. I don't think he's going to play on the Pro Tour. He wasn't going to play in Tucson, which is the next tournament. Well, even if you're Point. a couch potato, you don't want to have a pulled groin. I mean, I think it's already pulled. 13, I think 13, 12. If, if it was pulled, he wouldn't even be able to do what he's doing right now. Short. In my opinion. It's probably a pretty mild to becoming severe strain at this point. If it was pulled, it would be completely black and blue and he really wouldn't be able to even put tape on it. It'd be too painful. 
Marcos. I don't see the way Nadi has Marcos, reacted here in the last three or four shots. I, I really believe now, more than any other time, he's done. Yeah. Before that, he scored some points and had opportunities. He could have easily had a pretty big lead here, but it's not, it's not the same now. And these extended breaks of changing gloves and coming in and out of the court, that's not going to help Naughty either. Well, I thought Naughty was done at 9-5 before he even took an injury timeout. I could see the look on his face and the way he moved and reacted. Number two, Nadi Abrado wins the first one after he found himself up 20 to 8 in game number one. And Marco Chavez came back and scored eight straight points before Nadi closed it out with his final win. And, and that's yeah. the one that looked right. like it hurt his. And that's what our referee said. I knew it was over by that left wall. I didn't remember him jumping into the wall, but that, that really explains it there. An awkward twist. And Dave, you talk about guys playing two ways. Here it is right here, Dave. Yeah, that right there. Now watch when Nani lands. He goes, he looks down at the ground and goes, ooh. Yeah. That hurt. Just instinctual that he jumps up on the wall. He is the little cat. And, you know, I'm sure he just wasn't thinking about protecting that groin, which was injured coming into this match. You saw the K tape that he had on there. Now back to Chris at the ban here there's a little controversy Marco Chavez before that two minute timeout felt that he scored the 14th point the referee just said that it's only 13 to 12 and I don't know if we could review back to see if there was a a point scored to make it 14 I believe it is 13 I think they may come to us and that's the only reason why I'm bringing it up because I see Marco saying, "Let's we're double checking this. We have a walkie talkie here, which is our communication with the referee, and he's not on that walkie talkie, but Marcos thinks it's 14. I seem to believe that Marcos did score quickly there. And watching the Simple Green US Open of handball, race rate stop number one. This is the senior 40 plus professional handball tour stop number one as well. Of different problems here. Nani not liking the ball. Marcos not liking the score. Nani not liking the rap that he got from the med table. Mm. Had to put his own work there. A lot of discussion here for just a simple towel timeout. And let's see what the referee does here. I see him marking on the scorecard here. We have the head rep, John Bike, here. The ball's being reviewed again. Dave, they are using the race for eight ball here in this event. Is it 13 to 12, Dave, with a short call? Well, I know there? the score is 13 12. I don't know if there's one short. And then they walked off, so it should be second serve here. Okay, two serve. And it's being called two serve. 13 serves 12. And that's coming in from our broadcast van. Check the ball, Marcos. <laughs> of course. Now, when Marcos hits this short, I don't want you to say that that's a double fault because he wouldn't have hit this 13, serve 12. had he known it was the second serve. But it still would be. Regardless of what I said. Hold it. Hold it. Well, Marcos could be upset, but really, <laughs> Nani's trying to get out of the way, and he's trying to do it with one leg. Well, Though I know that 13, the rule doesn't 12. state that if a guy's injured, he, you can be pushed oh, I around. Think that's pretty obvious avoidable. <laughs> I like how Marcos just kind of feathered that back, knowing that Naughty was going to get anything. 
14-12. Wow, that's an impressive serve no matter what the injury is. 15-12. Point. Dave Nani Alvarado playing 16, in two divisions sir, here. That's taxing. Played two matches on Thursday. This is his fourth match in the seniors, so that's six matches in four days. 12, sir, 16. Sixteen, there's twelve. Okay. Now he becomes just the third player to hit one over the back wall. You have to think you'd make a great three wall player if you're able to get that ball over that back 16, wall. Serves 12. That's a winning shot. Yeah. In three wall. Short. Well, if it hits the ground first, yeah. If you front it to right. the back, then three wall in Second Australia serve. maybe. Mm, yeah. Nice Let shot out. though from the one-legged Nadi Alvarado, left-handed kill shot down the left wall, making it twelve to sixteen. Twelve to sixteen. Nadi's still pushing Marco side to side here. All of a sudden, Nadi's starting to look a little bit more comfortable right now. I know he's not putting the ball down, but he's hitting the ball with some authority. Get out. But just doesn't have any ability to move forward. Sixteen serves twelve. Sixteen to twelve here in game number two. I think that's 17 to 12. Marco's four points away from probably taking the match. I, I don't see Nani coming out 12. for a tiebreaker, but Oops. if Nani feels like he can come out and stretch it at the med table, perhaps we'll see a 11 point tiebreaker between the two. I've still never seen Nani end the rally with that swinging left hand stiff arm into the right corner. I've never seen him win a rally with he that. He hits shot. it too high. For some reason he does, but I don't know how he can't work on getting that ball 12. down to about four inches. I think it's a nearly eight. impossible shot, particularly from the places he tries it. Now Maybe I do see Nadi coming out for the tiebreaker. If he's going to finish out this game, I don't see why he wouldn't come out for the tiebreaker. 19 serves 12. Well, he scored two of the last Point. 17 points. Make that 18 points. 20 serves 12. Short. Second serve. Cut out. And we'll see now if Marcos has the same sort of difficulty closing out <laughs> a game that Nadi did. That was a t terrible second serve, Dave. He almost fell over hitting it. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen that before. Oh, we did see somebody on the tour. Look at this. Swing well, and miss. 20. I like that. <laughs> Instead of slow mo replay, let's do the <laughs> the fast mo. That's actually pretty cool too. Dave, don't you just hate to see two Naughty guys in this kind both of both guys pain. laboring there? I don't think Marco's really laboring. Naughty just in a tremendous amount of pain. Twenty thirds twelve. Here it is. Game point. Game. One, and this might be it, minutes. but we'll find out. Marco Chavez takes down Nadi Alvarado, and I'm not sure if Nadi will continue to compete here. I'm sure he'll get with his team and they'll decide what is best for his health. But Dave, you know, we all sit around just kind of waiting to see what will happen to Nadi Alvarado. It's the Simple Green U.S. Open of handball. Dave, now I know that you would have stepped back 
miles ago. Let's go to Kara and see what she would have done if mm -hmm. she would have stayed on the court. Kara? Hey, guys. I'm right in the middle of a story right here, so I miss what you were saying because I'm talking to Arts Chavez. Marcos is dad. No, you're with me. You're with me. He said, no, you go ahead. You keep on talking no. as you're sharing the story. I want you to share it with everybody, though. First time that Marcos qualified, he gave you a phone call. Tell me about what happened. Well, you know, I, was, I had promised him because, you know, I couldn't keep going to, to all these tournaments trying to qualify as a son. Uh, you know, because he helps me a lot with that. So I said, look, either you go or I go. <laughs> so I'm going to go to work, you go and qualify, and I promise you, if you get to the final finals qualifiers, I say, I'll be there. I don't care where I'm at, I'm going to be there. Okay, so it was in Texas. I don't remember what city it was. And um, I get a call from the hotel. I said, Mr. Chavez, you got an urgent message waiting for you here. He said, your son say, is saying that he's qualifying tomorrow. Oh, man, you know, nice weather, 80 degrees. I was hoping I could take a day off or something. <laughs> so to make a long story short, I tell the concierge, hey, look, get me to Texas. I don't care how you do it, get me over there. I got to get there in an emergency. Okay, they gave me a ticket, whatever, and I ended up going to Texas. I like to think it was Fort Worth, but I, and then I get there and it's below zero. The whole, I think the whole state was below zero. Oh man, I said, geez. And, and then no cars, no taxes, no transportation, because they get the black ice, I think they call it. And, and, and you know, nothing's moving. So somehow I think I rented a car, they rented a car and I got to the to the hotel and, and, and it was already early in the morning. I, I walk in there and Marcos is warming up. I go, Marco, and he looks at me and goes, Yes. <laughs> yes. I think we've all seen yeah. that, that exact emotion that he right. does, that expression. You know, and, and that's one of my best stories because I think that made the difference for Marcos beating uh, his opponent and, and qualified. That's why I always think, you know, it was worth for me to do it. And maybe I lost a few hundred thousand or something like that, but, <laughs> but Marcos qualified. <laughs> that's good. That's and you say that because you two work together. So the right. reason why is that one of you has to be home to run the business. Yeah. You're both here now. Why, what right. brings you out to the open? Well, you know, now but this is a Sunday. Nobody works on Sunday. Not even, I'm a slave, but not, not even me works on Sunday. <laughs> no. You know, I like to watch him play. I mean, it's my favorite thing to do. But, you know, I can't do that anymore. Yeah, I, I, I lose too much money when, when I run watching Marcos's game. And then it might cost me my divorce, too. So I, I think I better... <laughs> what do you miss most about it, missing these matches? Uh, the camaraderie, by far. It's so nice to be around the guys and have a few beers with them and laughs. And, you know, that's that is where I really messed up, just leaving Hamburg. Well, I come around and, you know, just enjoy, like yesterday. Oh, man, we were sitting there and then they had the mariachi. I love the mariachi, and then some of the mariachi knew me, so they stayed there with me, playing my favorite songs. <laughs> See, those are moments. We all know the mariachi band, <laughs> yes from yesterday. Right, and and because some of those guys know me, so they actually dedicated a few songs to me. They stay there for like about an hour. That's what I miss, you know, being around the guys, and the beautiful girls like you. Oh, no. <laughs> so what do you think? What do you think it means to Marcos to have you here? Because he was excited. He was all, He came out for the last time out. I did not know you were here, and he said, "Hey, my dad's up there in the orange." And he, he was just had this big smile on his face. I know he likes to see me here. He thinks I know more than him. So you know, he likes to see me. He walk down and tell him, "Come on, Marcos, no more of that easy shot. You step on it, man. Come on." He the question it. is, do you know more than him, or what do you think that now he's he's up there? No. <laughs> I was never that good. 
I, I got to week open. And, and I thought, oh, I, I finally made it to, to the Masters. Now I can compete a little better. Because I was always in great shape, you know. And then, but, oh, I got to the finals on the, on the Masters. And guess who my first opponent was? And the finals. Fred Lewis. I hate that guy. I <laughs> <laughs> he's right down there right now. He's Should we bring him up? No, no, he's a beautiful guy. No, <laughs> One quick story about Marcos as a young kid that he would not want us to know. He was the perfect child. Wow. <laughs> yeah. He's a good kid, you know. Zero, zero, zero. Yeah, so he had a lot of respect for me. And he, he behaved. He was a good kid. I have one, but I'm not going to take <laughs> I knew it. All right. I'll well, him. <laughs> thank you so much, Art. Back to you guys. Yes. Thank you very much. Thanks, well, thanks, Kara. Yeah, you got a little emotional there talking about Marcos qualifying for the very first time. And Dave, one, sir, zero. when I qualified, I called my dad and told him that I qualified. And you know what my dad's response was? He said this, at what? Uh-huh. Well, what would you expect? Knowing good and well which city I was in and where I was at. I had a similar experience to Marcos. The first time I qualified, my dad surprised me at the finals in Milwaukee, 1995. That must have felt great. It was cool. But you know, there's so, so much emotions involved with fathers and sons in this game. It just means so much. Yeah, because they the got you into the sport. Yeah. And then finally you say, hey, look what I did. You could never do this, and I did it. <laughs> no, but you're really proud, though. Yeah. And. Uh, your dad reacted the right way. His dad reacted the right yeah. way. Your dad also Your reacted the right too. way. Yeah, yeah. actually, <laughs> come to think of it. <laughs> my father asking me what One. I qualified at, as if I wasn't qualified to qualify at anything One, in, in life. He was right. Dave, I think Nadi's going to push himself like this is his last ever match. I'm just getting it that feeling. Be. Yeah, <laughs> it might very well be his last and match. You've been trying to put Nadi in retirement for a lot of years, but I'm thinking if he's going to throw his body Who's out like two? this, he's got to know he's not going to be able to play for months. Well, I didn't try to put him out of retirement like you did after he got injured here. Point. I said he'd come in here and fight. Hmm. Well, that's what fighters do. Hmm. I know you subscribe to the Mike Greenberg style of. Mike Greenberg's an amazing two. former athlete. Being on the chess team isn't necessarily an athlete, but maybe Mike looks at it that way. Hold it. I'm surprised we didn't see an argument there from Marcos. I think it would have been warranted. Well, that wasn't a hold it type Three play. No. The hold it happened, the shot before that, but. If you're going to call it, call it. Don't wait till the un moment. And now four to two, Alvarado going to the breaker here. Hey, remember, Nadi Alvarado could barely score a point in the last 40 minutes of that second four game to include the injury timeout, and now all of a sudden, four points. Short. Second serve. That five to two. You're talking about retirement. Marcos might consider retiring if lose, losing to a one-legged guy. Yeah. Five thirds two. That might be the only retirement we see after this match ends. Hold it. Not even with it. Great look to score the six point. Five thirds two. Short. Second serve.
Okay, oh. would you compare this to the bloody sock or something along those lines? Yeah, I would. Yeah. Michael Jordan playing with the flu in the NBA Finals. Well, it's not over with it. Marcos Jordan. just has to make a couple front corner kills to get Nani to run up front. Second serve. And this could be over with. See, Point. Nani can't go up front at all, so yeah. Marcos just needs to find a way to make the ball land in front of Nani somehow. And I, usually hitting a corner will do it, but he took a little off, went to the left. Three, Nani three, couldn't five. get to the ball. Three to five score. And I think Marcos could just run this table right here if he does it right. He's wanting to play Nani just like he plays anybody else, but he, well, has, I, to, he has to change. Well, I think that's the danger is adjusting your game when you think that your opponent is Hold limited. It. It. And you see a lot of guys lose because of it. You know, you think your opponent's tired, so you start trying to run them around the court rather than going for the appropriate rally ending shots. Yeah, but Marcos is just engaging in rallies. I don't see him going Three, for any shot. Five. Just pounding the ball back at Naughty. Bad bounce. Now he just misses that by it. Just a little hair. Now trying to get motivated here from the local hometown crowd. Max capacity, senior 40 plus five, finals five. tied at five, going to 11. Crazy shot here. Yeah, that was the ultimate party ball, but it ended up in a great spot for Marcos, who was there in point blank range. Six, search five. Six to five here, breaker. Nadi Alvarado injured, has a upper hamstring or groin injury, and Nadi now six, calling six, a timeout five. here. Watching the Simple Green U.S. Open of Handball, WPH Race for Eight, stop number one on ESPN3, the Watch ESPN app. Aside Dave Vincent, my name is Dave. Oh, well, aside Dave Fink, I'm Dave Vincent. I almost called myself Dave Fink there for a second. You know it's a long weekend when that happens. One of the last things you want to call yourself. Non-toxic, simple green, all-purpose cleaner. Easily handles the toughest spills, splatters, stains without harsh chemicals. Try it. And if you're not 100% satisfied, they will refund your money. Simple green, the all-purpose cleaner, available at simplegreen.com, your local retail outlet. Try it out. I used some simple green this morning already. Well, it's not toothpaste, Dave. So oh. I don't know if that counts. Oh. I thought that using Simple Green as toothpaste would, was <laughs> acceptable. <laughs> yeah. Apparently it isn't, according to you. Hmm. All right. That would be a good three, product to make, though. Five. I want to talk to Bruce about that. We might have just invented something. Sorry that you're not part of this invention. Well, I'm not an innovator. You said you're not, it's not toothpaste. You were right. very negative right. about <laughs> the way you brought that <laughs> up. So you're not part of the think tank. Mark Cuban and I will talk about this on on the shark tank I could see you and the cubes getting along really oh, well yeah. two, two guys that are really have their egos humbled wish I had one yeah I see that being a great friendship 
That's a nice left-handed kill there from Chavez. How would you ever even butt heads over anything? You and the cubes. I just agree. I just agree to disagree. Yeah, that's what you usually do. Big setup here for Marcos. Nadi gets it off the back wall. I have a feeling this one's going to get really tense here in a couple minutes. Nadi overhit that, upset with himself. Marcos unable Hold to take it. care of it. Nadi goes for that left handed Hold corner kill thing again, keeps it up high. Marcos has plenty of time to get there. Nadi holds him back. Now, watch after there's contact how Nadi kind of well, holds this is a Marcos. Watch one this. wall shot here from Nadi. Look he how just Nadi holds him right there. Five. Like, yeah. I'm still not going to let you fight around me to sh Hold show that you can get to this. That's another level of hinder ship that I like from some of these top players. Oh, you like that? Okay. Well, yeah. I know Mark Cuban would. Yeah. Mark Cuban would be on the floor getting technicals. No screen called there, though. Because you've seen some of these players break around those picks and still get to it, and the referee allow them to take it. And Nadi kind of hooks his arm and keeps you back. Great That's shot from Marcos. That's a brilliant shot. It yeah. feels so good when you, when you go for it and actually execute it, too, because yeah. you have to feather it right down the wall. And that could be dangerous. You could leave it up, and you're way back. Look how this slides down the right wall. Oh, so Perfect shot. So if you miss that shot, now you're pinned behind Nadi, and he has the open shot. Seven, five. He had Nadi fooled there, but couldn't get the double bounce. Marcos is hitting the back wall. Yeah, he's hitting the ball too high. He had it fade away to the right side there. You want that ball not to make it to the front wall, to the back wall. Seven, third, five. Side out, oh, that's going to called an avoidable. Oh, no. Out, <laughs> that's the Marcos worst. is off to the right here, Dave. That's the worst call I've seen this weekend. The ball came all the way out, and he had no shot. You're oh, right no. <laughs> you bet. You bet. The so that's why he Side was out. number 20 to start this event for you, Dave, and now I'm sure probably out of the top 100. After that call. You were in front of him. That's what I said, though. Calling an avoidable from that spot and that part of the court is very difficult for the ref to see. I was up there last night, and you just can't tell how much room, but you have to err on the side of. Here's that angle. Where else could Marcos have gone? And now it's a point for Nadia Alvarado. He gets a side out on an avoidable call. He probably wouldn't have ever even served again in this match. <laughs> and now it's 6-7. to seven. And if Mark, if Nadi can get hot on the serve with one leg, oh, oh, almost did it again there with the. If this is overturned, Nadi gets a point. And it's not second serve. Wow, Nadi almost cracked that to tie it up at seven. And here it is on that. Yeah, it was short. Paul Brady would have made that easier for the line judges by fist pumping to let them know that it was in fact short. Terrible Point. serve from Nadi, but a worse return. Marcos doesn't make Nadi move one inch. Beautiful to first hit that strike. First there. strike. Yeah, left-handed first strike. Seven now tied at seven, seven, going to eleven. What will Nadi Alvarado do here? Go to the right, Dave. Yep. Marcos dives in again. Over. Uh, and Nadi just spreads out to make sure he's really in the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in your way, but I'm going to make sure I'm really in your way. Yeah. Seven, serve seven. We're all together at seven in the tiebreaker. One-legged Nadi Alvarado serving. Short. Second serve. kind of bouncing around here. Oh, no screen call. Over. Hold it. I hit over, Marco. Marco's throwing a fist bump oh, no. there. He's not, not going to like this. Oh, the screen. Let's see this argument, though. 
Well, okay, the over is where? Marco saw that ball all the way from the front wall to his hand. What it was, was the called over? before that. I, no. No, the hinder was called before that shot that was just shown. It was two shots before. Neither of them heard it. Should have it. been four shots before. Well, it was called. That one was not called, but. So there was three hinders in one play is what we're saying. The one that was called, the one that should, the two other ones that should have been called. No, he yeah. called. He called the hinder when Marco slid in with the fist, where he seen the ball all the way to his fist from the front wall. No hinder. Look at the replay here, because we have time. Could it? John Bike, the head referee, have overturned that avoidable call? He's standing right next to I Luis. I don't think he would. Here it is. Now this is where I thought the hinder was. I th Marco just barely got it. Now here's where the hinder's called. Right there. Oh. Dave, where is the hinder? Marcos never once not saw that ball. It was on the right side of Nadi the whole way. Left his hand on the right side. Nadi got out of the way on the left side. It went right to his hand. There was not one hinder there. But the hinder was called, and the fist pump was came out. And this is even a better angle. That's where the hinder should have been yeah. called. Now, here's where it was called. Right here. Look, Marcos saw that all the whole time. Nadi did come across really quickly. But that was, the hinder was already called before that happened. Marcos gave the fist pump because he won the rally. And the referee said hinder. I mean, your number one said hinder. Now he's really checking this ball here. But, you know, Sometimes referees make that quick call saying hinder when they really do mean safety hold. Because when not when Marcos is barreling in like that, he doesn't want anybody to get hurt. And he could very well just mean hold up or stop. I like the John Bike approach where you say just let it develop a right. half second further. Four seven serving seven. You can't it's hard to remove that hold when once you call it. We're all together here though. Oh, got a nice crack, sir. There's another screen, no call. Probably correct. Nadi's not going to die for that. Has no legs to do it. I think if Nadi was a little bit fresher in the legs, he probably would have argued seven for a hinder call seven. there. set up here for Marcos, takes care of it, gets the eighth point. Now Marcos three points away from defeating Nadia Alvarado. And they will have an on-court celebration here for this. Eight or seven. Either way, eight to seven. Oh, and Nadia just completely shanks it in the Chavez-Bermuda triangle back there in the right corner. Marco's now two points away. And here's that shank back here. Probably want to get back to the live action here. Well, after this here, watch this shank. That ball kind of stayed up for Nadi, didn't it? It fooled him just a bit. Well, Nadi tried to slow down his swing, and a lot of times when you do that, you make your worst mistakes. Usually when you slow down your swing, it's because you lost the ball. And now you're just going to try to react to whatever you do find. Or you're really nervous in the back corner and just want to get the ball back in play. Marcos does it again, goes right down that right wall. Now one point away is Chavez, one point from winning this match. And winning another simple green U.S. Open title. Every year, Dave, we see Marcos celebrating on this court. I mean, he's, I think, won the most trophies out here at the simple green U.S. Open. He's one point away from assuring that Paul Brady isn't going to catch up to him. Marcos Chavez here at the 40-plus senior, number one stop on the Race for Eight Tour. Stop number two for the overall race is in Tucson, Arizona. It's a no-entry fee tournament, so you can get in without having to pay. It's a benefit event. Now, you are asked to give a donation to the Junior WPH Development Program, Dave, that you head, and it's going to be a festivity of fun stuff. Uh, how does that Juarez uh, event work itself into uh, this tournament with the Battle of the Border? 
inside of a tournament yeah. like this. It's going to be a lot of crazy stuff going on with all the different divisions. Yeah, we have all the that. different junior divisions for all the ages starting at 9 and under, and there will also be a separate competition that's called the Battle of the Border 2. It's Tucson's Fred Lewis Foundation taking on Team WPH Juarez in a seven-match showdown. Each win will count as one point for their team. The first team to win four will be crowned the Battle of the Border 2 champion. All right. Match point, sir, seven. Oh. That ball went all the way out of the, oh, it hit Marcos and went out of the court. Sounds like a fun tournament in Tucson, Arizona. That's November 6th, 7th, 8th. Mm -hmm. Going to be on ESPN, the Watch ESPN app. And features big ball, indoor, four wall. You can get your entry and name in at r2sports.com. Marco serving match again to seven. win this match. And he just did it with a crack serve. Nadia Abomato. Gives Marcos a little hug there, and now Marco Chavez wins the big check and bigger trophy. And Marco Chavez just seems to win every big senior event. He's won the Players' Championship two years in a row in the senior division. He's won a number of other senior stops, and now he adds this huge U.S. Open to his illustrious resume. Yeah, singles and doubles, outdoor singles and doubles, big ball champion as well. I mean, he does a lot of stuff, crosses over, and he's 43. 42 years old, uh, which is very difficult to do. But if you think about it, he's a current national champion in doubles right now with Sean Lenning. And uh, he's an incredible, you know, his three wall, he's small ball outdoor right. success has always been well known. Yeah. He's won some national doubles championships there as well. A yeah. current three wall doubles champion. It was an awesome, doubles champion. if it wasn't yeah, for true. some other things, would have been a great final right here. But still, regardless, <laughs> what Marcos did is a, uh, you know, playing doubles and singles is an amazing. He's still got to play his third finals or, you know, for the third place. So how about a big hand for both of them? All right, come here. Not going into the court for this celebration. For you, Robert. <laughs> Look at Naughty and to Marcos, Senior. Here's your medal. It's very congested. And after the medal, what everybody's coming for, it's a little bit of uh, green from a simple green. So, Nadi, congratulations on the second place. A lot of money right there. Thank you, Bruce, for sponsoring us. It's uh, $3,000 for first place and a big check right here to go a long way. So, simple green money. Thank you. You guys want to say something real quick? Um, I'd just like to thank uh, the Nadi. Uh, the Alvarado family, uh, Bruce Fabrizio, Simple Green, um, WPH, and the USHA for, you know, holding and helping uh, with this event, and also uh, to Nadi uh, Jr. Uh, I know he, he came to, uh, with a little injury there at the end, but he, he stayed in the court and gave, gave us a show, gave you guys a show, and um, uh, I mean, he's still the number one player to me uh, in the senior tour, so congrats for making the final, Nadi. Ready for the Davos final, okay? Marcos, I am going to stay with you here, if I can, for a second and just say congratulations. In there, I know probably a whole bunch of emotions running because from that first game, the Nadi has that injury timeout. What's kind of going through your head with all that? Well, um, after the four wall nationals, about two weeks after, I hurt my back and my sciatic nerve, like around the L4, L5. So I've been struggling since then, um, trying to get my game going and it's been a very long journey these last three months. But, um, I mean, knowing how it is to play with an injury, naughty, I mean, so it kind of helped me out and kind of put the, level, the playing field to, you know, to even grounds right there. So I was pretty happy about that to kind of get that little advantage, you know, because I've been trying to step up my game and it's been difficult. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to win this and uh, we just go for the senior tour next year and try to win another one. I talked to your dad a little bit earlier. He was giving me some... 
I don't know some things about when you were younger and your first time qualifying, what it meant for him to be there for that first championship. Yeah. What does it mean for you? He's up there in the stands. You have a whole bunch of up there, people up there supporting you today. Yeah, from him being in, at work in Mexico City and, and then uh, traveling down just to see me qualify and then uh, having him here watching me play, it's just, you know, it's going to be memories for years to come and uh, I appreciate every moment I have with him. So. Having that injury with your back and going through so many matches that you're even going through today, how are you doing it? How are you staying on top of it? It's just like I go point by point and I'm um, trying not to do some grueling shots, you know. I'm not bending my legs as much anymore and so uh, it's just, you know, just point by point I'm going right now. All right, I know they want to take some pictures with you so I'm going to let you go. Good luck this afternoon. Thank you very much. Okay, Kara, thank you too for your continued coverage down there show court dave thank you for stepping in and we have a junior wph clinic going on and one of these amazing outdoor and side courts or indoor courts that they have at the los Caballeros sports village men's senior 40 plus finals it was marco chavez taking down an injured nadia alvarado but marcos himself was injured so it's what you expect in a 40 plus final there better be some kind of injuries marco chavez now is our number one ranked player on the 40 plus senior cup points with the race for eight and the world players of handball in the senior tour but back in the small ball elite men senior or I should say elite men tour it was Paul Brady winning earlier against Luis Moreno and now we're going to have the men's pro doubles on this court coming up next and then we'll go outside and capture some of the outdoor action stick around we'll have more handball here at the Simple Green U.S. Open of handball it is ESPN3 and the watch ESPN app We'll give you some more from the Simple Green U.S. Open on this beautiful Sunday coming up. Stick around.